Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a recap on my family medicine rotation. I finished it about a week and a couple days ago, but then after that rotation ended, that weekend was just really hectic because it was my cousin's wedding and I was the bridesmaids. I just kind of forgot to film this video, so I'm gonna try to film it right now. I just got back from my rotation and like the commute is crazy but I'm loving the way that this one is set up and just how much I'm getting to do. I really feel like a true PA in a sense. So I'm going to quickly go through the things that I wrote down and that I thought were um, important and what stood out to me in my family medicine rotation. So my family medicine rotation was at a outpatient clinic center um more just like a doctor's office and there were two doctors that worked there and a couple of nps and the main person that i really worked with was the doctor um they were like family owned um the wife and the husband worked there and then also the doctor that i followed mostly was a cardiologist but he also did internal medicine and then the wife um she was a also a doctor but she did more of like women's health and i spent most of my time with the cardiologist because he was there i want to say three out of the four days and then um the other doctor i would only work with her one out of the four days and so i would ultimately get to see all the patients on my own because i was almost like an MA, I would triage them, I would get all their vitals, do my physical exam before I would present to the doctor, and then I would present my case, give my assessment and plan, and he would tell me if he agrees or disagrees, and then he would clarify on things that I had questions on just because cardiology is a specialty and it's very much like something you wouldn't know if you never specialized in it because there's just too much but after this rotation i really feel like he helped me understand a lot about congestive heart failure and what the medications are um indicated for and things like that so it really did help in that sense and i also just got to see a lot of the comorbidities that the general adult public has such as um, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, um, mainly the first two that I mentioned, but it was like every single patient had this and I would ask the same questions. And at some point it became like very natural for me to see these patients. My autonomy as a student was honestly impeccable. I had so much autonomy to go into the room to interview the patient. And I never felt rushed or to the point where I like had to go back to the doctor and say like, I couldn't do this because I know that you're running out of time. Like everything always felt like it fell into its natural pace. And I don't know if that's because I just feel more comfortable seeing patients now or now I know how to target my questions and redirect if a patient goes on tangent. But I... I honestly felt like the doctor trusted me to see these patients and then when I would give my assessment and plan that was something that I sort of stumbled on but towards the end he did say that I was getting better at it and I think that to me as a student like that's all that mattered it was that I recognized my flaw and something that I wasn't that strong in but worked on it and at the end my preceptor said that I was getting better and I think that's all I can ask for as a student. So as for procedures, the things that I was allowed to do at this site included venipunctures. I did a couple of pap smears and vaginal exams and then also um, EKGs. Basically did that on every single person. I don't know if you would consider that a procedure, but you are essentially like putting electrodes on the patients and putting the leads on onto every electrode so i don't know i don't know you can consider that um a procedure or you might not but that's exactly what i did my hours were essentially nine to latest i stayed was five or six o'clock 
and um they were all appointment based so it's not the case like urgent care where anyone could just walk in you kind of have to see them it's more so um they call ahead of time or they already have an appointment um from a follow-up at the hospital and that happens a lot just because as a cardiologist you see a lot of people who you saw in the hospital but are coming in to follow up like two, three months after a heart attack or two, three months after cardiac pacemaker implantation, something like that. So a lot of the patients that I saw, if they weren't coming in for a chronic problem that was being managed already, it was essentially so that they can get a follow-up um, to see how they were doing after or status post um, an MI or some sort of cardiac surgery. The one thing that was different about this rotation was that I had to learn a completely new EMR system. So I've only ever used Sunrise and if you're from the tri-state area or like Long Island, you'll know that Northwell is big on Sunrise and they only ever use Sunrise. But there are other hospitals nearby such as um, New York Presbyterian, there's NYU Langone, even just like the local city hospitals, they, most of them use Epic. And so at this location that I was at, they used Epic as well. And I've never used Epic before. So the day prior to going in, I got like a five minute rundown on where the things were and how to write the notes on Epic. And it was honestly kind of crazy but i did learn it through just like writing my notes every day essentially it has the same things it has your like tokens and your keys but it's called different stuff and there's a template that you can have and there's there's things that are the same but it was just difficult in the beginning because i didn't know where to look for like imaging and things like that so um that was like one of my struggles this rotation i also want to say another hard part of this rotation was just remembering all the classes of drugs and specifically for like heart failure, hypertension and diabetes. There are so many drug classes that all treat the same sort of comorbidity or disease. And so for like high blood pressure, there's ACE inhibitors, ARBs, there's thiazide diuretics, um, beta blockers, things like that. And then most of them can also be used for heart failure, but there's like new medications that are added, such as Entresto. Some of the big ones that, that the doctor I worked with used were SGLT2 inhibitors. Yeah, so generically they're known as the Flozins, but the brand names I believe are Farsiga and Jardians. If you've ever seen them on TV, on the ads, like those are used for heart failure as well as diabetes but then diabetes alone there's also biguanides um dtp4 inhibitors iglp1 i believe um there's insulin there's um, sulfonylurea there's just like so much and like as a student when i was studying for pharmacology obviously like I remembered all of them and I remembered all the side effects, but now putting that in, into practice and like, oh, if this patient comes in with this symptom and has diabetes, but like which one is better for them? Like that's when it was gonna get hard for me because I really had to remember like, what were these medications doing? What are the side effects? What makes this a better choice compared to something else for a specific reason? So things I would brush up on for your family medicine rotation, I would definitely say to review how to read EKGs, just know like the morphologies of the waves and the length that you want your QTC, also the PR intervals, what the degree of heart blocks there are, how to spot an end STEMI or a STEMI, um, and just, know like what leads are for what area of the heart and then um you know if you're ever unsure you can always google it but i think it's just it's nice when you review all of it and then you go through your ekg and you look at it and you're like wow this um this doesn't look right or this looks right and and that was just something that i remember because i had a patient come in 
post MI and I did his EKG and the second I saw it I was like something is not right here but I couldn't really put my finger on what was wrong with the EKG so I brought into the doctor's office and I just said to him like I did his EKG he's not in current acute chest pain or anything um, but this just doesn't, doesn't look right and I don't really know why and so I learned from that that like well obviously I knew that your EKG won't be normal right away after an MI but this patient had something called tombstoning and it was just like and not like anything I've ever seen before and if you have ever learned about EKGs tombstoning is a word that you use to describe someone's EKG when they're literally minutes away from death so um it was just like an artifact from his previous MI and it just showed how much damage like that heart attack had on his heart and it was just crazy to me that I got to see something like that um, I would also brush up on vaccinations. A lot of the patients you're going to see are within the age range of like 40s to maybe 70s. Um, there were a lot of patients that I saw that were in their 90s approaching 100s, which was honestly crazy. But definitely know those as well as the screening cutoff. So colonoscopy is important, pap smear, breast cancer screening, prostate screening, as well as testicular cancer like all of these are so important and i think a lot of people just don't know about them and they also have a fear of going for these screenings because like who wants a scope put up their um like behind like no one wants that but things have to be done if you're concerned or if you have family history so it's important to know when these cutoffs are and when to have a patient go for these types of imagings and screenings so yeah, that's basically the entirety of my family medicine rotation. I honestly would give the rotation of a 5 out of a 5. It was so impactful for me because I love the doctor that I worked with. And I also think that I learned so much within those six weeks. Um, and I truly just felt comfortable doing what I was doing. And, you know, like, you're not always going to get everything right as a student. And that's okay because I definitely got pimped and I definitely got questions wrong. But... The doctor was encouraging and he just said like, okay, do your research, come back tomorrow and we'll discuss it then. And I really like that approach because it, it like, it helped me build my confidence a little bit more because I knew I wasn't exactly talking about nonsense, but also I knew that I had a way to like, a long way to go before I could reach my practicing status, if that makes any sense. So um, I really like this rotation and I could definitely see myself doing family medicine. It's not something that I would completely just like scratch off the list as of now, but um, I'm still trying to maybe look for something that is inpatient and outpatient um, because I, I do like working in the hospital. I think it's nice to have all of like the labs and the imaging accessible at your hands right away. But I also just, I like to see patients that are more stable and not, you know, like in respiratory distress and things like that. So it's a little bit of both and I'm hoping I can one day find a job that has both aspects. That's going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope that you got a little bit of insight as to how my family rotation was. If you have any other questions about your family medicine rotation or anything pertaining to rotations at all, definitely leave them down below. I would be happy to answer them. And um, yeah, that's gonna be it. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!